Um, our next reader is Bernd Saruman. Bernd Saruman is joining us from Gracie, Kentucky. He came up for the Brooklyn Book Fair, and his new Mad Hat Press book is uh, out there on the display, Seven Notes of a Dead Man's Song. It's a wonderful book. Um, Bernd? This is called Dark Man. On a hillside in the cool leaves of the first fall night, I remember I will never, right now. And then years push between us like a throbbing tooth. I remember clothes, a glance, perhaps an eyelash in a dimly lit stairwell. You remember tears falling like wet syllables. All the light that's ever washed over your streaked face now washes over mine and then buries itself deep in my palms. Galaxies keep spinning themselves out into the space between unbearable sighs. My ears burn with starlight. Uh, this is called Nocturne. Through listening to the stars, when scenting the night flowers, the deepening cobalt dusk, somewhere off years ago, a window was barred against intruders. We live our entire lives in fear of locks. So then, abandon is felt in two dimensions, and a backward glance reveals two small breasts you have the audacity to show me in light of a hanged moon. Who are you now? Will you open the window? Will you take the night into your locked chest? Metamorphic. I mind your glance for anything of value. A world ends a hand's width away from the flicker of late night TV as the notion of travel is discussed. Destinations are shuffled like a deck of face cards. We get in the car. When I roll down the window, it means that I need some air. When you roll down the window, it means that I will dance with a stranger at a bar in a city where I won't know you anymore. We will speak in the voice of a stranger, and my heart will crack like granite to reveal a vein of dull, silent horror. Portents. Obsessions twist like weather, the cold receptacle of an upturned palm, the casual dismissal of everything near the familiar center. A temple of hands is built in the morning with blue light. There are footsteps in the snows of last night's passing. And soon, soon the footsteps will be black. Smoke, too, will rise like a threatening hand from somewhere off in the distance. The nature of scent. The salt, the trace of all your tears, scattered to flow the slivers of a thousand frozen days. Another tract of silent letters in the basement of averted eyes. Years later, learning how to get bigger mirrors to fall into the rising light. Fills another minute, then another. Soon an event will surface like a bruise. Footsteps stop a hand from recalling the fond hours of darkness. A bed retains the scent of pink, like a black sheet in the thin morning light, where formerly an arm shone. Heat wave. It is decidedly summer. A short stint in the arms of a shimmering girl as the midday sun smolders. Rocks white in the face of the heat stare on. Eyes risen while bright gestures sink out of sight in the blue water. I salute this daily like a burning flag. Stairs. The smell of damp leaves in the woods at night. I hear you whisper about a change of season approaching. Yes, I say, the season of leaving arrives. Soon, a stairwell will deliver me from a single phrase. Soon, a stairwell will reduce me to a point in time. Soon, a stairwell will no longer hiss its sad threat. But then morning will offer its soft apologies. A turning point approaches. Enough, you say, and kiss me. Malagory. In this country, there's a girl from the high-rise who is murdered. Surely that same girl was the one I kissed in the woods. This much I am sure of, I tell all my friends. I loved her and she loved me for all of an afternoon. Later, I'm told it was all a lie. There was no girl. There was no high rise. There was no murder. This much I'm sure of, I tell all my friends. There was an afternoon in a country where I spoke the language in the manner of a native. Entrance. There's a field behind the girly bar. There's a girl in that field, and I am with her. Later, we explore a dark basement room. Years later, I am that dark basement room myself. 
I open the door. I go in. I'm sorry. Years later, we walk slowly up to the point. It's rocks dulling themselves against January ice. We sniffle stiff promises as our planned life creams like a distant galaxy. Then a lie breaks into someone's ear. We learn the hard way that love holds a silver bowl under our noses, that a blue coat equals what a hole is to sand. We learn that a stone thrown out on the ice waits until spring to sink. Trapped. Our room is inhabited by the ghosts of winter. Outside, a cold settles like snow into our boot prints. Tell me again why we have walked here. Explain to me again why we subject ourselves to the scrutiny of snow. Repeat the vows we have taken, meaning to keep like plastic flowers. Tell me again why these woods feel so empty. A new year brings, this is revelation, a new year brings rain to a distant state of mind. Finally, the weather has horribly broken. Finally, a curtain has parted to reveal a curtain. Night falls like ashes, and I mean this in the best possible way. Looking out across the lake, invention attends the sunset. I've brought myself here for no good reasons. A woman has a basket of food and wine. Slowly, she comes toward me. I offer her my dark balcony. I offer her my steep stairs. Slowly, she climbs them. Another curtain parts, slowly revealing the curtain. The view from here. A do-rag and a drop shot of gin. A do-rag and a late night diner. A do-rag and a missed chance at sleep. A dream lopped off like a lake gone bad. The farther away from the castle, the better. I call you there, tell you, I'm existing, here and now, in a moat. I'll end with, uh, with these two. Uh, this is called Exchange. Trees are swaying to the ebb and flow of time. In a small room in a basement, a rug is unrolled and a boy and girl get comfortable with each other. The room is filled with dark items. Soon a lie will be born. The lie will be held briefly by the boy. Then he will give it to the girl. This exchange of words will continue for days, weeks, and years. Finally, the truth will emerge as a small bird. The truth will fly away as a small bird, and the truth will build a nest in the shape of a room. Isn't this the way it always ends, with words as fragile as small blue eggs? And this is called, again, apples. We explore any excuse for our inaction. In a small house, the sound of a drawer opening is monumental. Later, we'll walk through an orchard on the way to where a boat is overturned in a garden. That night, we will sleep under that boat. Again, apples play a minor role in this. No hands clap to the sound of a distant woman, a woman far away who has not yet been committed to memory. And then, of course, there are the apples. Thank you.